Hey, this is Shobit from Intentional Product Manager, and today we'll be talking about a call for product managers to finally get serious about the most important topic, leadership. Stay tuned for more. Hey, Chobethan, as I mentioned, we are talking about one of the most important topics in product management. In fact, I would say, if you were to ask me, how do I sum up this career in one word? What is going to make me successful? That one word is leadership. Leading yourself, leading your team, leading your customers, leading the world and driving the world towards something better. And, and I know it sounds a little far-fetched that, oh, who am I to change the world? Who, who am I to act as a force of making it better? But fundamentally, this career can be about that. And that is why I personally find it so fulfilling, whether it's product management or second entrepreneurship, it's that impact I'm having overall. So I'm going to cover eight very important aspects of leadership that you need to pay attention to, you need to get serious about. If one, you're gonna change the world, and second, you're going to accelerate your career. You're gonna make the income, the impact, and have the kind of freedom that you really want, get the satisfaction that you want. So let's begin with those. Number one is confidence. It all begins with confidence. Confidence is ultimately a sense of self-assurance that you know you yourself are worth it, that you can get things done, that you might not know any, everything right now. You might not have all the answers right now, but you can figure it out. Look, every single day, even now in my business, I got to maintain that sense of confidence. I got to be the leader that tells my team when things are you know, not going that well, that we will figure it out. Sooner or later, this is a problem that will be solved. Now, why I begin with confidence is for two main reasons. Number one, most people think that confidence comes from them doing something. Them, uh, when they have the right skill set, they will become confident. That is a fundamentally flawed way of thinking. What actually happens is first you need to generate a little bit of confidence. That gets you moving. That gets you acting. When you act, you start to understand that, hey, you're not so bad. You know this thing. Or, you know, you start to get that sense of, yeah, I am moving forward. And that's when you build more confidence. Then it goes in a loop. It just, you know, confidence, competence loop. That's what it's called. So confidence is actually super crucial to getting anything done and to build on any skill you're building. So that's one of the reasons why I start with that is it is so crucial. And also most people don't know how to actually build it. There is a possibility. And in fact, it happens with many people that they are really good at what they do. They are good at uh, product management, at communication. You know, they, they've, they've done achieving uh, amazing things. And you could never tell by looking at them or by hearing them. You might think this is a junior product manager who just walked in for the first time and, you know, maybe they have five years of experience and, and I mean, five years is still a lot, but like, you know, they're just like two years of experience in product management. They haven't achieved anything. and. The thing is that you can do conscious things every single day. And every one of my clients who does well does these things that help you build that self-worth, build that confidence, and moves you forward. So the number one leadership quality is confidence. Let's talk about number two, and that's communication. You have to start to communicate as a leader. Now, when I say that, most people think it's basically about me giving, you know, these amazing talks, you know, like Steve Jobs on stage 
inspire everyone, motivate them, just like everyone's blown away. And that's great. You can absolutely do that. But you know what great leaders do when they're communicating? When they come across a challenge, they maintain that sense of, cool, I got this. Related to the first point of confidence. That confidence gets reflected in your communication. If you've ever heard the term executive presence, that's what it's all about. Executive presence is ultimately all about staying calm, staying true to yourself, staying centered when you deal with adversity in our maybe a larger public setting or with your peers or with your stakeholders. That is what great communication is all about, is maintaining that sense of uh, certainty and that calmness when you're faced with challenges. Now, of course, you you got to have many other things. You know, you got to have a sense of inspiration. You got to have a sense of clarity, which I often see missing. Um, and a whole bunch of other things to be a great communicator. But ultimately, it comes down, does your confidence reflect in your communication? And when you're faced with challenges, are you able to maintain that sense of calm, that sense of, I got this, and you're communicating it to other people. So that was part two, or quality number two, confidence. Let's talk about leadership quality number three, is reaction to adversity. Very related to the, you know, the, the first two confidence and communication I talked about. But this is a topic on its own because there was a communication aspect where when there's adversity, you maintain your calm in front of others. The other important part is what do you do for yourself? I'll just give you an example. I, I work with a lot of people to help them land their dream job. And, we, and this is a difficult thing in some sense. They are consistently getting rejected getting rejected either in terms of we give them feedback that, hey, your performance in that mock interview was not good enough or getting affected, uh, getting rejected in the real world. They apply somewhere, they had a lot of high hopes and things didn't work out, happens. Or uh, interview doesn't go well. Sometimes company, their dream company says, please don't apply here for, for six months. Ooh, that stings. That reaction to adversity tells me everything about how successful this person will be in finding their dream job. But it also, it tells me everything that this per about this person's future career prospects. Especially if they have, just like most product managers that come to me, they say, hey, you know, ultimately, I want to be either a C-level executive or I want to be an entrepreneur. That's what they're, they're aiming towards. And when they want that to happen, as an entrepreneur, you know, just look at my life. Every day there's rejections. Every day something's going wrong. In fact, one of my mentors told me that every single day, Shobit, your job is to solve problems. It's because you solve problems is you can live the life you want. You can have the freedom of an entrepreneur. You can set your own time. You can take your business where you want to take it. You can make a really good amount of money. Like all those things only happen because you are there to solve problems. The reaction to adversity is just the fundamental aspect of that. Because when you're trying to sol solve problems, sometimes you just are like, oh shit, how do I solve this? And when you have that reaction, you can stay there for a little while. You can panic, but sooner or later, you got to figure out how do I solve it, ask the right people, figure out a method, try it, see if it works. If it doesn't work, try a different method and go for it again. Problem solving is so crucial as an entrepreneur and same thing as a product manager. And it's your reaction to adversity and how do you take that into account and still move forward is what ultimately is, uh, is going to be a leadership quality that will move your career forward. Quality number four, influence. Influence is bringing people on board with a mission that you want to go tackle. Now, 
super well talked about topic everyone talks about being data driven uh you know make a solid case all that is good but ultimately what influence comes down to is understanding human psychology it's understanding that people do things for their own reasons and not your own reasons without influence you cannot drive anything forward in an organization you can't do new initiatives you want you have new idea for your product you you'll always struggle you're trying to get alignment on your roadmap you'll always struggle so what it really comes down to is understanding what are the motivations of the people that you work with and why would they why would they support anything that you you do so i recently did this post um which a lot of people like so the idea was that as a product manager you live or die by how well you understand others incentives see almost every week i speak to some product manager who's convinced that they are surrounded by people who are biased against them and i'm not saying that bias does not exist it absolutely does but i found that often the cause of that apparent bias was that somehow they perceived this product manager to be working against them it could have been that they were you know they had a particular way of doing things and by proposing changes the product manager had feel them you know made them feel unsafe they could have been engineers who wanted to build on the latest and greatest technologies and the product manager had prioritized boring work because that was what was required to fulfill customer needs it could have been that the product manager was starting to be perceived as the group's next leader and their manager was feeling threatened So no matter what created the great product managers who drive massive organizational changes accelerate their careers and get promotions in a time frame that nobody else thought possible they do that because they have often mastered understanding others needs and perceptions they reposition what they what they are proposing so that others feel safe and they feel that the product manager has their best interest at heart even if they're proposing an entirely new way of doing things so before you dismiss somebody else's view as biased consider how you might be affecting their goals and incentives and see if there's a way you can realign what you are proposing with what benefits them that is what influences which is helping people understand why this thing is important and how it fits in with their incentives okay that was number 4 influence number 5 related to this is relationships look building relationships is a fundamental aspect of you showing leadership as a product manager and for you to be successful whether it is within the company whether it's with customers or just the broader community to help you grow in your career later on and this is where that dirty word comes in which is politics which is that Hey show with I I just realized that other product manager who had not achieved anything they got promoted because they had sucked up to our, our other people you know that kissed ass uh, yeah the kiss their ass that's that's the word whatever yeah you know whatever whatever that thing is um that and so now now they are promoted that's that's just a very negative way of looking at this thing and look I know politics fixes. I know there's product managers who shouldn't have gotten promoted and they do, but most of the times when product managers are getting promoted, they're doing both things. They're both doing the work and then they're selling the work. They're building the relationship so that there's people who say, "I put my hand up and I support this person's promotion. I support this person getting the right leadership initiative." So that's the um that's the thing that's absolutely crucial and building relationships and actually what my clients do which is very intentionally managing their relationships over time is what helps them get to that next level and be that product leader okay so that was the next thing uh two more to go i mentioned eight in the beginning i think these se- seven cover everything so we'll we'll stick with seven okay got it so number 6 vision a vision for your career a vision for your product a vision for how you want your life to be what is vision you you can understand you see things right and the thing is 
Vision is really seeing things before they happen. In other words, uh, you know, there's a very famous saying, which is faith is um, uh, faith acts as if you've already received something. Vision is similar. You perceive and you understand how your customer's life will be different once you have the ideal product out. You'll see how, how easy it will become, how much fun, how much joy they will have. Same thing for yourself. When you get to a particular level or achieve something in your career, you know, life will just be better. And you have envisioned that over and over again. My, my clients do a lot of visualization because you want to have that sense of inspiration and motivation that's driven by that vision rather than being stuck in the memories of the past, stuck in what's not working. Um, so product managers who, like, you need to be serious about leadership. You need to be serious about your ability to actually envision things. And there's two aspects, as I mentioned, for your life and then for your product. Both things are skills that can be learned. I've learned how to envision my life. I've learned how to envision my client's experiences and how they change as, as they build up. And you need to do the same to be that product leader. And now the last leadership quality, which seems a lot more tactical, but it's actually probably the most important, prioritization. You might think, sure, but prioritization is all about analytics. You know, I use the rice framework or wheat framework or corn framework, terrible joke show, but whatever. You know, I use some framework to prioritize and I'm done. <sighs> no. And the reason why prioritization is a leadership quality is because it takes real courage for you to drive that prioritization. What does that mean? Well, very simply. Um, even if you had come up with some sort of prioritization, what will for your product? Now we're talking about that. You'll immediately be started to immediately starting to get all these requests from others that no, maybe we should throw in a little bit here and a little bit of this and a little bit of this. And what ultimately ends up happening is your product becomes a combination of what everyone else thinks that it should be, and it really has no strategy behind it. So um, I remember talking about this before where if you have this need to please others, no matter how much prioritization you do, it will never actually get reflected in your product. It will never actually get reflected in your decisions because you never showed the courage to take this forward and to make those hard choices. And now that same prioritization also affects your career. You have to prioritize what do you want to go for? Are you going to go and focus this next time on finding that next job? Are you going to focus on getting promoted in this job? Pick one. Very hard to do both. I remember for the longest time, um, I've had clients who've been stuck because they've not been able to find time to work with us in a program called Intentional Job Search. And it's because they're too busy in their job. And they cannot seem to prioritize, despite investing thousands of dollars, they're not able to prioritize the job search. And so they both are miserable with what they're doing. And at the same time, they're not really getting the job that they want. So you as a product manager, absolutely uh, need to have this leadership quality of prioritization that flows through your product and then flows through you into uh, what your life needs to be. So I, I gave you the seven qualities. Let me repeat again. Confidence, communication, reaction to adversity or staying strong in the, in the face of adversity, influence, relationships, vision, and prioritization. Now, if you really want to be strong as a product leader, what I would encourage you to do is to check out a program called Product Leader Blueprint. I'm going to leave the link here and then set up a call with us uh, using uh, using another link that I'm going to leave here. Product Leader Blueprint will help you build those qualities. And of course, you need to speak with us if you want to really understand what's working in your career, what's not working, what you should be focused on. And if it's one of the things we teach, of course, we'll, we'll show you how. But if not, we'll, we'll give you other resources so that you are, you're successful.
Excellent. Looking forward to speaking with you and, and maintain this leadership, especially in these times.